All right, lady, it's time for our top secret stuff from the Adafruit vault. Open the vault. We've got a couple things uh, that we could show off first and then some demos. So this is uh, some of the work in progress. This is a stem QT board. It looks like, like an alien mouth or something, like a big tongue. But it's actually a, um, it's a stem QT breakout that allow people to plug in remote nunchucks. Okay. So that'll be fun. Those are iSport T. Uh, and then also... Um, we've been working on a canned feather for a while, and I saw a particle feather wing that had, like, it was canned, but it only had one chip. And I was like, how is that possible? Turns out that there is a chip from Microchip, it's like the MCP25, 625 or something, and it contains both a SPI, a can converter, and a transceiver, which means I could fit the whole darn thing onto a Bitsy wing. So you can add a SPI CAN bus to all of our tiny little boards. Okay. Tiny. And then uh, I'm working up some tarot card type things on e-ink displays. Uh, we have them here as demos, so let's check these out. Yeah. So this is the grayscale. Um, okay. Yeah, we're trying to make it as easy as possible to do e-ink. It's always been hard, so this is literally just a drag and drop of a file. You yep. can do grayscale, circuit python. So if you know Python, you can now do yes. IoT. Correct. E ink electronics. We just added thinking. we just added grayscale e ink support for um, these displays. They're, they have fast updates, but it's uh, four layers of grayscale. So it's got this kind of like papery white, yeah. uh, of course black, and then two shades of gray. But it allows you to do some cool art. And then um, this is the new product for this week. But uh, also showing off, uh, Phil B has a great um, tutorial on how to use dithering. Uh, with image magic, and I always say no project is complete until image magic is involved. Yeah. And this is just a tricolor display; it's only black, white, and red. But um, you know, the image when when somebody has pink hair and is holding a uh, purple and pink snake, that actually looks pretty you're, good. You're basically black, white, and pink yourself. So, so. I I fit perfectly. Yeah. But it's amazing how dithering our brains um, are so good at taking dots and turning yeah. them into color. I mean, this she looks purple, but yeah, it's not it just like red and red and black and white. All right, what else you got? Um, speaking of e-ink, uh, we wanted to make uh, an all-in-one e-ink like cloud display. Yeah, I should show that this is uh, not connected to anything. Yeah. This is just sitting here. It gets on the internet on its own. Yeah, and um, it's uh, it's got these uh, magnetic feet. Uh, which will allow it to stick onto anything. Because we were thinking, like, you know, if you want to make a little IoT display, how do you do it so that you don't have to drill holes in your wall or, like, you don't have a little, mm. um, you don't have to have a stand? So this is an ESP32 S2. Um, it's got some buttons. It's got USB-C. And um, it's driving the e-ink display. And then maybe uh, soon we'll do a couple of videos. I've been doing a low-power um improvements on this and we're also testing out deep sleep on the ESP32 S2. So I got this whole thing down to about 250 microamps. You know, I think considering all the extra stuff that's on here, I don't know if I can go low. I'm going to try to see what is taking up the current because it's, I think yeah. this ESP32 S2, um, there's no published numbers, but for the 32, it's down to like 50 microamps. So there's 200 microamps here. Maybe I can, um, I can get rid of. But uh, it's a challenge because I think the like the regulator is like 80 microamps. So I might have to get a regulator that is ultra low power. But I really like this one because it's low dropout and high current. So it's like a it's just a trade off. So I've never had to deal with the quiescent of 80 microamps making a big difference. But in this case, it might. So um, in this case, it's just going to adafruit.com/quotes uh, and getting some inspirational quotes and displaying them, and then going into deep sleep. And then waking up like every 30 seconds or so. Yeah. So, you know, maybe charge it up like once a month or something, like once every couple months. And then this is USB-C, uh, CircuitPython, all sorts of neat stuff. And it's, uh, this is really cool. It's very portable. And, yeah. And uh, you can do a lot of uh, IoT projects in a few lines of code. Yeah, I'm going to do some math also to figure out exactly how many refreshes. But there's like cool things we can do with like deep sleep and light sleep. And we're also working on adding uh, more sleep modes to CircuitPython. Right now we have light sleep mode. We want to add uh, deep sleep. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, e-ink displays are great for, for deep sleep because you can go get, I mean, I'm obviously getting a quote every 30 seconds, but for a lot of projects, I think people only need data updated every 30 minutes. Yeah. So if you can deep sleep for that 30 minutes, it's the last, like, literally months. Yeah. All right. Anything else? That's all I got. All right. Get it back in the vault. Back to the vault. 
back to the boat.